Thanks, Mustafa. As Mustafa said, I'm with the South African Environmental Observation Network, um, but our work extends uh, considerably beyond our mandate at present because uh, we're also involved in establishing earth and environmental observation data platforms uh, for other stakeholders in our own country and, and uh, in the region and strongly involved in, in geos activities and of course in, in ICSU. I'm going to give a brief overview of our thinking in respect of how uh, ICSU and the World Data System uh, can fit into global research data infrastructure and of course important components of those would be our efforts to establish a metadata catalog and uh, a knowledge network uh, associated with it. Okay, so I mean most of you I suppose are familiar with, uh, uh, with the World Data System which is a revamped version, uh, updated version of the old World Data Center uh, arrangement that was in place. And Mustafa and Rory could correct me, but uh, when I bought the presentation, I think my count was something like 86 members, of which about 56 are essentially data centers, more or less in that, that uh, ballpark. And most of these data centers, of course, are focused on providing quality assured uh, data and services to the scientific community. But uh, the information that they have about their efforts are, of course, uh, more useful to a wider community. Um, so WDS is, of course, also active in promoting data stewardship, uh, the increased use of standards and conventions and improved access to products derived from, uh, from the data and services of its membership. Now, WDS has for some time thought that it would be a good thing to provide uh, a metadata aggregation of the holdings of its membership. There are of course many other institutions and initiatives worldwide that uh, more or less aim to do the same. So there's always a danger that there will be duplication of effort, and it's one of the uh, things that I'll discuss a little bit in more detail uh, later on. Uh, but nevertheless, there, there will be value in uh, obtaining some aggregate view of the data and service uh, offerings uh, that the membership can uh, provide. And then I think what is maybe more important is to supplement uh, these traditional metadata sources with essentially two things. The one is additional information about our membership, the authors and the coverages uh, of the data and services in respect of time and space and the topics that are covered by them. And then also metrics in respect of uh, citation indices, quality indicators, usability and so forth. These are sort of fairly new ideas or relatively new ideas in respect of supplementing metadata, but uh, nevertheless important. And then what is often overlooked is that in these metadata collections, there are all kinds of implied relationships between the actors and the systems that populate the metadata. And to some extent, this tells us what people are up to in a global scientific endeavor. So our knowledge network is essentially aimed at, at uh, mining this uh, untapped resource. So WDS is now resolved to, to position itself to be, we hope, a critical component of, of global research data infrastructure. And specifically in, in, in three uh, main areas. The one is to, as we said, provide this aggregated metadatabase. Then also the knowledge network services that can be built on top of it. And then maybe uh, as a, a side benefit of this, but uh, vitally important, to maintain and support a registry of trusted digital repositories. And as the pressure for data citation on the one hand, which is, I think, essentially to the benefit of the scientists themselves, and the pressure from the funders to deposit data as part, uh, sometimes even condition of, of funding. As these pressures increase, the need to be able to unequivocally identify trusted digital repositories 
as a location for deposit of research outputs is obviously going to increase. So this, I, I think, is a, an important service. And um, efforts are underway, at least uh, as far as the WDS's own accreditation goes, and data seal of approval to harmonize the, uh, the accreditation metrics that are associated with these repositories. And of course, uh, ISO 16363 was recently adopted as a framework for uh, certification of repositories. And one will have to start looking at how to integrate that as well. Okay, so what are we trying to achieve? Well, traditional metadata is, as I said, useful, but not particularly so because it is very strictly hierarchical and very inflexible in the data that it's describing. So it has only a few relationships between the major actors and elements uh, that make up our work in science, um, and it ignores many of the others. And the alternative view of this, of course, is complicated, but much more useful, because there are all kinds of relationships between these things that are implicit in the metadata and are very difficult to get hold of uh, without a lot of effort. So for argument's sake, there are interrelationships between the people that are described in metadata records or between the people in the institutions or the coverages in terms of topics and so on, and even relationships between the topics themselves uh, that are implied in the metadata uh, that we're not at, mo at the moment making proper use of. So, our liberalized metadata schema, to some extent, is a network that, uh, that describes this in, in more detail. The focus, I thought, to initially ascribe to Kingfisher Beer, but it's also um, it seems inherent and not, not only in the eye of the beholder. So I'm sorry that these, uh, these relationships are not particularly clear to you, especially at the back, but uh, they are actually there. Okay, the other thing to remember is that um, traditionally we have relied on metadata and metadata only to describe what we are doing, but there are of course many other sources of information about what we are up to in the, the scientific research that we do. Um, so we also think that there will be an increasing possibility to supplement metadata from all kinds of other sources, um, whether they be the equivalent of something like social networks or um, information that is scraped from websites and so on. Uh, there are several other options uh, for maintaining and extending uh, uh, information in such a knowledge network that we're having a look at. Okay, so in these typical network elements that we've described, we've now also put in the location or, and the relationships uh, between trusted digital repositories and these elements, and uh, we're going to use that uh, for our work in relation to establishing uh, such a registry. Okay, so if we set out to, to build this infrastructure, we have to consider a whole number of, uh, of inputs, starting with scalability. Now, I think these initiatives will stand and fall, stand or fall by the ease with which they can be maintained. If, uh, that for me is the primary consideration. If it means that uh, the actors, uh, scientists and institutions and funders and so on have to do extra work to maintain this knowledge network then we've lost before we've started. So gathering this information must almost be a spin-off or a byproduct of things that people do in their own self-interest anyway. Uh, that would be that would be the, the let's say plan A, uh, the, the most positive outcome. If we can achieve that, then, then we, we, would be, uh, we would be winning. And this would mean that it's never gonna be a situation where there are sort of bulk acquisitions of this information through some kind of content building exercise that's funded through a research grant or something similar. It has to be built somehow 
on many near real-time contributions from a large variety of, of participants and contributors. And then we also have to take into account that uh, we do not believe that any kind of monolithic solution will ever work. There are all kinds of practical and political and technical reasons why it's, it's not ideal. So we have to think of this knowledge network right from the start as being capable at least of, to be distributed in how it's implemented. That bits and pieces of the knowledge network will live in different locations and be maintained by different interests and, and uh, funding arrangements. So that scalability is, is uh, one of our main concerns. Then secondly, sustainability. And I'll talk a little bit more towards the end about financial sustainability. But we also have to establish technical sustainability in respect of the standards, landscape, and software, and so on that we're using. And maybe more importantly, uh, governance sustainability by uh, taking the community with us, having their support and their buy-in. And then maybe one of the most important parts is to engender some form of, of trust uh, in the arrangements that we put into place. So there's several sustainability uh, considerations that we, that we have to think about. Diversity, as I mentioned, there are already initiatives that are doing many of the bits and pieces that we envisage as part of this uh, infrastructure. And, of course, there is no incentive to duplicate what, uh, what's already being done. Um, so whatever we do needs to tie these initiatives together as best we can and supplement them rather than, than recreate them. And I think from, let's say, some years of exposure to this environment, the other thing that we forget is ease of use. At the moment, the, uh, the, the, the information systems part of our work in, the, in data science expects of the end users to understand XML technologies and standards in great detail and this has got to change. Um, they should actually not even notice that these standards are needed in the same way that if we use the internet we really don't have to understand how HTTP or HTML works, it just works. So I think there is an ease of use component that is overlooked in the current infrastructure implementations that we have to try and take care of as best we can. So in terms of that, I think what we're almost aiming for uh, ideally is something that mimics Twitter. Because Twitter uh, is sort of self-maintaining and scalable. It meets many of these criteria. And the only difference really between what we're trying to build and what Twitter does is that the hashtags and the relationships between them are better defined. They come from, uh, if you will, controlled vocabularies of some kind, where lists of institutions and lists of people and lists of keywords and definitions of spatial coverages and so on are predefined uh, so that the complexity of the number of ways in which you can say it are diminished. Uh, greatly diminished. But in all other respects, uh, something like uh, a Twitter-like environment where anybody and any system or any component can contribute a tweet, as it were, to establish a relationship between two elements in our network. Uh, that's really what we should be aiming for. And as I said before, we have to rely on self-interest. Uh, this must be something that is maintainable and the content must be provided from institutions, uh, scientists, and funders uh, working in their own self-interest. Uh, and we glean the information essentially as a byproduct from that. Okay, so bearing in mind that there is a whole lot of uh, existing initiatives already, we've tried to start putting some names to the easily achievable parts of this uh, infrastructure. And as you can see, um, these are not necessarily the only candidates, but they are good candidates in respect of how we work with the people part, authors and so on. ORCID is already established there in terms of data citations and to some extent the RDI outputs and describing that. 
uh, initiatives like data sites are already in place in terms of things like the use and the caveats and the lineage and the methods and the licenses there are already things in place uh, together with uh, let's say repositories that describe publishing houses and so on properly so these parts at the top here the ones that are sort of have these bold lines around them exist already and we see that as a starting point for establishing this uh, research infrastructure of which WDS then forms part. So our job is not really to create these, of course. Our job is to provide the glue that ties it all together so that people can make better sense of the relationships between uh, these initiatives. So we're going to start with the ones that are already there and doing a good job and uh, capable of, of being integrated into this open structure. So in terms of practicalities, um, we're starting with a parallel approach. The one is that there are practical implementations for our metadata aggregation, the membership database and the knowledge network. And uh, I think if we say establishment of a registry of trusted digital repositories, Again, this doesn't have to be funded or initiated or hosted or owned by the WDS as long as it exists and it can be integrated into the network. So there's a possibility, certainly, that WDS will establish it, but if there are other initiatives that are underway that is doing a good job of holding such a, a trusted digital repository registry, then there's no need to duplicate it. But in essence, our approach is, is parallel, where there are some practical implementation schemes for these things. But then there's also several working group and interest group uh, activities uh, together with RDA to establish community consensus about many of these aspects, including the relationships between publishers and citations and data centers, um, uh, harmonization of the certification processes, We've started now a knowledge network uh, uh, interest group uh, activity, or not interest group, but birds of a feather activity in RDA. So we hope to, to implement this uh, parallel process of holding something that works, but also testing it against the feedback and inputs and concerns of the community as we go along. I'm going to skip over this because this is for the technical people and we might save a minute. I see Mustafa looking at his watch. <laughs> so just some thoughts on funding. If we look at this whole infrastructure uh, collectively, there's no apparent long-term funder for this. So it's not as a, I don't think we can go to some funding agency and say, give us the money to bolt this whole thing. That's never going to happen. So from a practical point of view, we need this community consensus and essentially loose couplings between sustainably funded components inside this uh, GRDI. And increasingly, I'm becoming aware of something that I'm going to keep on saying until I have con convinced uh, many other people to agree. But at the moment, we are funding global research data infrastructure with grant funding for research. We're saying that it is more or less projects in most cases and that it is research but it, building infrastructure is not research building infrastructure is run-of-the-mill systems engineering and implementation type work that needs continuous baseline funding and should actually not be research because research is at the risky end of the business try new things whereas for research data infrastructure we should be building things that can easily be built and have already been proven. So I think that's just uh, final thoughts on how we should try and fund this. And then that's it. That's a quick overview of where we're aiming and uh, an open invitation to uh, especially our members to participate in whatever way you feel comfortable with. Certainly joining us in some of the working groups and interest groups in RDA is a start. But also, if you want to participate more directly, um, we'll be very grateful for, for any interest shown and uh, would uh, gladly accept it. Thanks.